Christ is in our midst. What a fun, wonderful day yesterday it was for this community. I was touched, uplifted. I was really joyous to see how many people working together from this community, young and old, together in harmony for that day for our community. I'm so proud that this community is just a, such amazing community. Glory to Jesus Christ. But this is not the sermon of this morning. <laughs> what I would like to speak to you this morning is the relationship between the cross and our healing. How the cross could be a healing for us. We may hear a lot of sermons about the cross. But today I'm going to take what St. Paul said in his letter that I carry in my body the sign, the stigma of our Lord Jesus Christ. So how could he, St. Paul, speaks about what he was carrying in his body? That sign that he used for his salvation because he said what was lacking, and there was nothing lacking on the cross, absolutely not. Jesus Christ have done everything fully for our salvation on the cross. But he has fulfilled what he need to do in his body by carrying that cross. In the Psalm 50, we say that a sacrifice unto God is a humble and a contrite heart, a humble heart thou shalt not despise. I want to take some few minutes today to speak about when we are given a cross to carry in our life. And we are all given crosses and we are all will experience and be given a cross, different cross in our life. When that cross is given to us, if we truly truly embrace it, then we will have healing of our souls. It says that Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they fell off from grace, and they lost that relationship. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee, it says in the doxology in the morning. So healing is so important for our Christian life. We come to church because it is a hospital. We come to the church because we need healing. We don't need only healing of our body, but we also need healing of our souls. But today we need healing of our mind, and we may need healing of our relationships too. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, when the priest come to visit you, the first thing at home when we are sick, not feeling well, then the priest should, and you should ask, that you should have confession. Before we take that Holy Communion, we should have confession. Because confession is the beginning. That's why the prayer of the priest, when he prays for someone who is sick, he says it is for the forgiveness, if there is any sins in him, may be forgiven. So the relationship between sin and sickness is very close tied. That doesn't mean that every sickness comes from our sins, but maybe some illnesses could be a result of our sins. But for sure, we say in Psalm 50, and in sin my mother conceived me. 
does not mean that the conception itself, that the act of my father and mother coming together to conceive me was sinful. It is being born into this sinful, fallen world that what we are all born into it. And that's why we all need healing. So I start with baptism, but then we continue with it. So the first thing I want to speak about is that how we understand that healing, it is when we carry our cross completely to the end. I have to ask you for forgiveness if I bring an example of my own life or my wife. I have to forgive me for that. I don't like to use my wife as an example, but it is a good example. When we first met and we got married, many times she says, I love you. And I answer, so what is love? What is love? And then with time, her being a patient woman, very patient and loving woman, the night she was dying, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that that is love. When somebody gives their lives completely for the other person unconditionally to the end, that is love. So that night I learned what love is, that I waited 33 years to learn about love. Then that's what she revealed to me, gave me an example of great love. Yesterday, as I was walking around, somebody called me and he said, are you a priest? I said, yes. I had a t-shirt say Father George in the back. <laughs> I said, have a seat. He said, I don't believe in God. I'm agnostic. But we have a group of people we go to. And we get together, but none of us believe in God. Okay. He said, I have a question for you. And I said, what is the question? He said, how do you attract all of these young people to come to church? I said, we give them Christ and we give them a place where they feel loved and welcomed and accepted. I said, oh, well, we have love too. I said, but the love of Christ is different, my brother. It is when we die completely for the other person, like Christ loved us. That is true love, the Christian love. So my dear brothers and sisters, the first thing about carrying our cross is to live the faith, the Christian faith. We are called to be different. We are called, especially today in our world, to give witness without having to make a lot of noise. We don't have to stand in the corner of the streets or be on the internet or to be on Facebook to talk about it. But our lives could be a changing point for many people. When our young people, we teach them that they should wait for relationship until marriage then they are telling the world where they live that there is value in virginity. That to be a virgin until you get married that first day, that there is a value in that virginity. That is the cross to carry because you will be different than other young people in your classroom, on your neighborhood. When we are getting engaged, we don't move in together to get before marriage. We wait until we get married, then we move in together. That is a cross to carry because the world is telling us that is not the way it should be. Now I want to come to speak about crosses given to us. Each one of us may have a cross. If that could be a relationship, that should, could be an illness, that could be a challenge, that could be a spouse, that could be whoever it is. When we approach those challenges with two things, St. Anthony the Great, he asked God, he said, this way you are calling us to live is impossible to live. So how can we do it? 
he said, you must have humility. So the first step for us to carry our cross when we encounter it, whether it is the other in our life, is to have that humility. Humility means that I am below everyone else. I am here before God. And that when I am humbling myself, that humility will give me an openness to the other person. To receive the other person with love, to be able to bear everything from the other person. That's why the psalm is says, a broken heart and a humble heart. So what is a broken heart? A broken heart in the Old Testament and in the Bible is a heart that completely depending on God. He has no dependence on himself whatsoever or herself. So to be a poor in a spirit, a few weeks ago I spoke to be about the Anawim, to be poor in a spirit is what we need in order for us to carry the cross. If we are given a cross that is an illness, then how do we carry it? We carry that illness with a lot of humility, a lot of brokenness of heart because when God in his wisdom allows an illness is not from God, neither is cancer or whatever it is, we can turn away from God and be angry, or we can turn in and be healed. And I'm not talking only about physical healing, because physical healing, you can go to a doctor, to MD Anderson, to Methodist Hospital, and seek some healing for your physical. I'm talking about how do we handle challenges. I have to tell you another personal story. Because when we, and I'm sorry, I'm very practical down to earth. My sermons is not a lot about the things in heaven because I don't know yet. I'm here. It is more very practical. When we get married and God gives us challenges, it could be a spouse, it could be in-laws, it could be a relationship, it could be a brother-in-law, whatever it is. How do we handle it? If we resist it because of our pride, because we are not broken yet, because we are not humbled yet, the minute we become broken, that means we put ourselves in front of the other person. We start to be there, I'm here at your service. I'm all here broken in front of you. And we take our pride away from it. Then the Lord will make miracles through us to heal a lot of things. When in the beginning of my marriage, there were challenges. And when I changed my attitude, and I started to go out to love my in-laws, to be there truly a son, and to forget my grudges and my feelings and my hurts and whatever it is, my life turned upside down. I started to live a happier and better life. When we are stuck into ourselves, when we don't have a pure spirit, when we don't have a broken spirit, a broken and humble heart, then once we acquire it, ask for that, then the Lord God will help us to be completely different. And when we approach other people, the relationship will change completely. The relationship will change completely. I'm going to tell you a story, and then we conclude. <clears throat> there was a woman who didn't like her mother-in-law. And this is not anyone here. It's a story, OK? So I don't want anybody to. It's normal, by the way. A lot of this happened. So I hope my daughter-in-law and my son-in-law, they will like me and they'll love me, you know, that I am not. So, <laughs> but there was a story about a mother-in-law who was very difficult. So the daughter-in-law went to this wise man, and maybe you know the story. And she said to him, I don't like her and I want to get rid of her. 
And he said to her, well, if you put poison, they're going to investigate you. You're going to end up in jail. If you do anything to her that is harmful, it's not going to be nice. She said, what should I do? He said, you need to start treating her with love. So every day, you tell her, mom, what do you want me to do for you? So whatever she likes, you do it. And day by day, you can take this medicine. He gave her something, put it in the food. It was just water. There was nothing in it. Okay. You just put it in the water or something. And with time, after six months, eight months, then she will die slowly. So this woman started doing everything she can to love this woman. Anything she wants, this woman, she did for her. Anything you want, food, how you want things done, she did it to make her happy. After six months, the mother-in-law changed, the relationship changed, the relationship between both of them changed, they started to fall in love together. The woman came running to this elderly man and she said, please, 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 I don't want her to go away. I love her so much. I don't want her. How am I going to reverse what you gave me? He said, that was only water. There was nothing in it. But you see, when she started to be loving, caring, when we die completely, Father James, a few weeks ago, he spoke about the stepping, uh, you know, on the <coughs> uh, grapes. He said that you step on it and you make out of it. And that is true. This is how Christian life is. So my dear brothers and sisters, what is the cross? Let's conclude. How the cross could be healing for us. Because the cross given to us, whatever it is, I don't know, it's given to you and to me. If we use it properly, it will be a method, a way of healing for us. And if we reject it, we turn against it, then it becomes a condemnation and heavy thing for us. Whatever cross you have today, that's why St. Anthony the Great, he said, that is impossible. You coming to church because you need the help. Don't try harder. Don't try to do it harder. It doesn't work harder. It works only when we are broken and we are humble in front of the Lord, then truly He will work miracles through us in all of our challenges that we face every day in our relationship. Only Christ can save us. Only Christ can be the one to heal us. Take every opportunity God gives to you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, is for healing. Either we change or we're going to break or we're going to become pieces and then it will break into pieces ourselves. So if we change, we are healed. Then that healing will bring us glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. To Him be glory and honor always. Let us all go today and through His help carry our cross every day. To Him be glory now and ever unto the ages of ages. Amen.